It's daytime! I'm Buster the Fox, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. This is Victory at Hebron. It's, uh, as you can tell, quite an old PC game. It came out in 2003. I actually have uh, the disc right here, which is how I'm playing it. You don't actually need the disc to play it, but here it is. No, that's, that's 3D Ultra Mini Golf. I don't know where I put the disc. I think it's probably still in the drive. But anyway, on the disc it says it came out in 2003. We got some nice uh, CG cutscenes here. Um, anyway, this is a uh, video game based on a trading card game. It's actually a Christian trading card game called Redemption. And it's a real trading card game. You can actually go online um, to the makers. It's uh, Cactus Cactus Software, or maybe not software, not software. It's, it's Cactus something. You saw it at the beginning there. But they're the ones who make these, this game. And I remember it from my childhood. And then one day just in the thrift shop I saw this game Victory at Hebron and so we got it and I haven't played it in years now and I remember I was a kid when I first played it look at this <laughs> this cutscene it's so ridiculous but uh, yeah so this doesn't actually play the same as the physical card game it's a little bit different um, I won't go over how the physical game is played but I will go over how this one is played once we get into it. Look, the card is just on fire. That's not. That doesn't make the card more powerful. Do you understand? I mean, he's so sad. He's like, oh man, he got me. But actually, hey, guess what? I have this, and mine is electric. <laughs> what? I love. This. Oh no. Oh boy. But yeah, th this game, um, to be honest, it's not that great, but it's like good enough to get by. So victory at Hebron, that's what it is. Uh, so yeah, let's go through it. And this is the, um, oh, and it does this. Um, I'm playing this through sort of a janky little setup. I'm playing it through a virtual machine, actually, of Windows XP, which is where I used to play it as a kid. Let's start a campaign and you guys can see the cutscene and listen to it while I talk After about this. <laughs> But, uh, so basically the story is, um, it's in Bible times, because it's a Bible-based card game, I guess. Um, and the idea is that, uh, some characters are fighting in a war, right? So they send some spies into the city of, uh, Hebron, or Hebron, whichever, I don't they pronounce it Hebron in this cutscene, which the voice acting is terrible, by the way. Oh, yes, it's bad. There is no army too great. There is no army no too, force yeah. too strong. So anyway, they sent a no bunch of spies, and every one of them got captured. The they didn't return. And so the idea is that you have to go in and find them and uh, fight the enemies in this card game to, to free them and other stuff. That's the gist of it. We'll so get into that more when I'm actually playing, because that's what I'll be doing, and so I'll Soon be explaining it and what have you. But, um, Hebron, yeah, I'm running this through a virtual machine, and sometimes the now audio glitches out a bit. Hebron. This game actually oh, will run, I, um, in Windows 10. It just, it forces you to play in full screen, and occasionally, like, when, when you're not moving the mouse, at least for me anyway, when you're not moving the mouse, it disappears. So you'll be moving around the mouse, and it'll be, like, flashing a little bit, because it can't decide if it's going to be there or not, and also the cutscenes have some really serious screen tearing in Windows 10. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much playable on uh, modern PCs, it's just it, it works a lot better on the virtual box, with the exception that occasionally the sound starts glitching out, but within like 15 seconds, it tends to, uh, to correct itself. So I believe this voice, by the way, this is our character. Just the most manly protagonist voice I've ever heard. So I think we're playing as Caleb, is our name. So this game is very nice um, in that it provides us no tutorial whatsoever. Now for those who didn't catch the sarcasm there, this game is not very nice at all for not providing a tutorial. Um, so here we are, we use the arrow keys to walk around, it's isometric. And we have a few things, click on the treasure chest, we can see our deck. We have all these different colors, which is terrible. This this game is sort of like Magic the Gathering in that there's lots of different cards that have different colors. Like here we have the ones with the cross symbol are characters that you can play on the field. And the ones with the Bible symbols are uh, enhancement cards. Uh, let me find a good one. Um, 
that that one. Like you, they give you two two, and then this number in the lower right corner, that's not there in the uh, base game, the actual physical card game, but that's a uh, stamina stamina number. I don't know. It it tells you how much stamina you need to play the card, right? So. You start off with 20 stamina and 20 or 40 vitality, which is just your hit points, which is also not in the physical game, but whatever. Um, so you use six of your stamina. Oh, it stopped a little bit there. Anyway, you use six of your stamina to play a hero, and then when you attack with the hero, you can play these enhancement cards, and this takes two stamina, and it gives him plus two, plus two, right? And he starts as a 6-6. Six, six. For example, Jonathan here. And these are all characters from the Bible, by the way. Jonathan, Esther, um, this is based on the character of Ezekiel and Jonathan. And they all have, like, scriptures in the old freaking King James Version Bible. That's nearly impossible to read, but, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, this this is the deck. Um, it starts you off with a pretty bad deck, to be honest. It's like, what is it, one, two, three, four, five different colors. Ideally, you'd want, like, maybe two, three colors if that <laughs> so yeah that's that's what the cards look like we've got a helpful little map feature this is a glossary of like all different characters you can find in the game which we will never be referring to and one of the first things i want to do is i want to turn up the battle speed and the character walking speed because first you'll see this is how fast we go normally right turn up the walking speed and go super fast it's a very noticeable difference so yeah that's the game let me go ahead and find a duel so um, this gives us like I said no tutorial whatsoever in that it doesn't teach us how to play but it also doesn't teach us what we're supposed to be doing or anything like that so as you walk around uh, Hebron you can find NPCs if you just walk up to them they'll tell you stuff mostly useless but the idea is that you want to find open doors like this you want to go into houses and inside of these houses, you may or may not find an enemy, and then they'll fight you. So in we go. I've been expecting you. Prepare for battle! So, there we go. We click and we're in battle. So, from here, I guess it's up to me to teach you guys how we're supposed to play, because I had to um, go through this a little bit uh, it, before starting this series um, to, to teach myself how to actually play the game, because the game doesn't do it for you. Um, this is where you get food and stuff. All this stuff in the center here is like items you can get, and that's not something you're normally supposed to have, again, in the physical card game, but it's a thing here. So, um, you see here, we start with 20 stamina, and so we have all these cards here. Uh, right now we're gonna play heroes, dominance, set aside cards, or food items. So, dominance, we don't have any in our hand right now, so that doesn't really matter. Set aside cards are the same as enhancements, basically. Um, then food items are so this is special items in the center when we don't have any. So right now what we want to do is play a bunch of hero cards. So we've anything with the uh, cross symbol is stuff we can play. And then you can see here in the corner, again, that's just a stamina. So we have Uriah, that costs six. We'll play that, and you'll see down here it lowers. Ruth, no, not Helmet of Salvation, Ruth. And we've got Cornelius and Mighty Warrior. And you can see um, they all have different uh, colors in the card borders means nothing means nothing at all don't pay attention to that i'm telling you now only pay attention to what's in the top right corner here that's the only thing that matters that is the color of your character i don't know if the actual card borders mean anything um but you only care about this you only care about the color by the symbol so we've got a uh, red hero white hero green hero and another red hero so you can see here that there's all of these bible icon ones the colored ones, the ones that are multicolored, you can use on any hero. But, for example, submissive, submissiveness here, it's white, so we could only use it on Ruth. We can't use it on Uriah because he's red. And that gives you plus one, plus one, it costs seven stamina, and it has this ability right here. Now, this is a terrible card, but we'll get into that later. Um, then Peace, you can see that has yellow. We have no yellow hero, so we can't even use that. Um, so let's end after that then we can attack by playing our heroes from the haven but we don't have very many cards that we can use to upgrade stuff um, like I said that submit it keeps on randomly freezing well it's done that twice now it's not that often but anyway 
Um, we could use that to upgrade Ruth here, but that only gives us plus one, plus one for seven stamina. And to be honest, the ability isn't that worth <laughs> for the amount of stamina it takes. So I'm just going to end my turn. And, and then at the end, you have to uh, discard until you have eight or less cards in your hand. And this is an interesting game in that you draw three cards instead of one at the start of your turn. But anyway, my opponent just played some cards. Now, this is another thing that's different. Uh, your opponent always plays evil cards and you always play good guy cards, right? Heroes. But yeah, they have these different cards. Um, now, one thing to note is that uh, this gives us 0 10, so that only increases our toughness rather than our power. Um, but we can use it on anyone. This gives us more power, but not as much toughness. Um, so what I'm going to do here, let's see, this gives me, lets me revert Pale Green. So my opponent doesn't have any Pale Green. I've had to sort of memorize what the colors are. This is Gray Brigade, and this is Black Brigade. So these are, the colors are called Brigades, by the way, in case I failed to mention that. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and put out Uriah. Oh, and he didn't do anything, so he just killed him right away. So, he was attacking with 4, and I was defending with 6. If my defense is higher than his attack, then I kill him. However, I don't do any damage. But if I'm the one attacking, and I were to attack him, um, then he would have lost 2, because I have 6 and he has 4. Um, so now it's my turn again. The first thing we do is release cards that are set aside. We don't have any of those, so we'll just skip this step. Um, now we're going to play heroes and stuff again. So I'm going to look through here. Okay, I do have Meditation. That's one of my favorite cards in the starter deck because it lets you set aside heroes and then they just get stronger and stronger with every turn. Um, however, it only works on Pink Brigade. Luckily, though, we just drew Jonathan. Let's see, that costs four. And Barnabas costs four. So I'm going to do that and then I'll have enough still to play Meditation. And I'll put that on Jonathan. So now he's set aside. Um, and every turn he's going to gain plus one plus one so that's generally what my strategy is is I'll get either meditation or there's another one called prayer and fasting that I can use only on yellow characters or I guess it's technically called gold brigade but whatever they're yellow uh, but yeah it does the same thing and what I like to do is I like to set aside one character and let him get up to like 10 10 and then I'll go in for the kill after that um, but for now, I'm actually going to end my turn here, because I don't have a whole lot of cards. Like, they're all kind of mismatched in different colors and stuff. We've got False Teachers, so that's a 4-4. I can now choose to defend against that. Um, yeah, I'll defend with Uriah. So he, again, didn't play any uh, enhancement cards. So what normally is supposed to happen is they'll play a card here, and then I can choose a defender. So I did that. And then once I do that, they can either choose to play an enhancement, which is the same as these, except they're evil versions, I guess. Um, or they can choose to just hit done, and that's it. Which I'm going to do now, because I want Jonathan to keep on powering up here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and attack, so I have no cards to play here, so I'll just hit done. That brings me to the battle step. Now, let's see. I've got the Sword of the Spirit, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Uriah, because he's my strongest. Okay, so I'm going to use the Sword of the Spirit to power him up. Let's see. So that's the only purple card that I have. Barnabas is purple, so I was thinking maybe I'll play him, but this card doesn't actually get me anything. It just lets me withdraw from battle, and that takes six. It's not the most useful card. I don't like this one. I'll be taking it out of my deck as soon as possible. Um... I do, however, have David's Staff, and Mighty Warrior will work with that. Now, do I have any yellow dudes? No, I do not. I have that, though. That's a good one for the White Brigade, so I'll play Ruth. It works with that. Aaron's Rod is a bad card. Now, you'll notice that my opponent doesn't have anyone here anymore, so when you play cards, for you it goes into your Haven, and for the enemy it goes into their Abyss. Um, if I were to play another card, though, if he has another character in his hand, he can play it out of his hand. Um, it does cost him stamina, though. So if I play Cornelius... Okay, so you can see he didn't choose a defender. But there he did. And you can see it cost four, and it lost him stamina. So that's what's up with that. Now we only have Jonathan here. And we can only attack with five at once, because that's just the only 
that's all there's room for. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, so the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do Sword of the Spirit to give Uriah plus 8. Now, the defense gain when you're attacking means nothing. Your defense doesn't matter um, in this version of the game. So there's that. Um, now, Ruth is going to die to Belshazzar because he has 6, which defeats 4. So I want to use Angel Food here. That'll give her a plus 3, plus 3, which gives her just enough to defeat uh, that card. And then I'm going to use David's Staff on Mighty Warrior to beat him. Um, now since these two have the same uh, power to toughness, they will actually trade. They'll just kill each other. So what I could do is I well, actually can't use Stillness because I just barely don't have enough stamina, but if my opponent actually plays an enhancement on this card, then I'll have the uh, chance um, next turn to play Stillness on this before they attack. So I'm going to hit Done. And anything that my opponent does not choose to play a an enhancement card on will get killed right now. Oh, I have to discard. Okay. So now he's playing enhancements on these cards. All right. So you'll you saw that uh, Cornelius didn't have a card up here defending him, so he just got through for free. So free four damage off of his vitality, and of course to win. You just bring the vitality to zero. Um, and here, my opponent used a card that um, captures one of my heroes, which means I can't use him until I either use a card that frees him or something else that takes him out of that status. So unfortunately, can't use Cornelius. However, the green cards in this deck are very bad anyway. So he's really only here to be fodder. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's see. So. He upgraded his Judas to have 9, Judas Iscariot, and then I'm at 6. And then the only thing I have here is the Steadfastness of Peter, which gives me 2, which would bring me up to 8, so that's not worth doing. And then this only gives me Toughness, which, as I said, does not matter, because I'm the one attacking. So that's useless right now. Um, but you saw that my uh, stamina came back. Um, when we're in battle, we just keep on going until the battle is over, and then we go back to regular turns. But every time it switches, um, you get your stamina back, which is very nice. Um, so Barnabas here is going to die if I don't do anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and use Stillness. Now, when you're on the offensive, it'll look like this card is doing a direct attack on me, but it won't actually take any stamina, so it's fine. Alright, um, now I need to discard until I have eight trying to decide what I want to get rid of. Apologies for the audio weirdness. Again, it, it is weird. There's nothing I can do about it. So you saw it attacked me, but I didn't lose any vitality. So we're all good on that. Alright, so now my opponent is attacking me again. So I've got that. I think Ruth should be able to make use of that. Still attacking me. Now, since I'm on the defensive this time, Helmet of Salvation will be of use to us. Um... I'm going to go ahead and put in Uriah and Barnabas, and now he's just overwhelming me. I don't have enough stuff, so I'm going to have to hit done. Alright, so I took some damage, but he also didn't defend his guy who was up here. Um, next, what I need to do... Let's see, should I use this or that? I think for now that'll be fine, because I'm just fighting a four. And then here, Barnabas is about to trade, and I don't want that. So I think I'll go ahead and use the Shield of Faith on him. I uh, I haven't been playing this for too long, but in my opinion, it seems like it's better to keep your guys alive rather than trade. I mean, obviously, but at the cost of something like this, um, especially if you're on the defensive, because that's the only time you can use these cards anyway. All of these um, the Armor of God cards. There's all different Armor of God cards that you can have, like the the Belt of Truth and the shoes of peace and stuff it's kind of cool but anyway yeah um so barnabas is in my hand and i also have him on the field you can't play two copies of the same card um if they're like a specific named character such as barnabas so i'm going to go ahead and discard him expecting barnabas to stay alive okay so he's upgrading him he got up to 11 but he didn't manage to stop me so the ai is a little bit stupid actually um, and that it'll like increase its 
guy's attacks and defenses and stuff, but it won't be enough. Oh, but what it... No, never mind. I'm on the defensive. But if he were um, defending against my attack and I had like 11 and he had 14, or switch that. If I had 14 and he had 11, then I would do 3 damage. But if he were to increase it by another 2, then he'd only take 1 damage because when you do damage, it kind of bleeds through and hits their vitality. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and put Angel Food on Ruth. Kill this 6-6 six, six Stone Thrower. Alright, discard to 8. That's not a great card. I think I'm going to keep this because this is one way to get in free damage. Which, if I get the chance, I'll show you. Ooh, there's Purin Fasting. That's the card that lets me set a yellow dude aside. But I don't have any yellows. Ugh. Yeah, that's not a good card. That's not a good one. The rest are fine. I have enough now. Okay, cool. So now we can. Now we're back to my turn, and I can release my set aside cards, which is Jonathan. But I want him to get up to at least uh, ten, ten, I think. So we're gonna stop that. So I have Faithful Servant and Barnabas again. It's my third copy of Barnabas. Um, I'll put out Faithful Servant, Hero and then. Already in play. Hero already in play. So I can't play him because Barnabas is still in play, but if he were to die, then I could play him. So I can't play him yet. Um, right now it looks like my opponent only has two... Uh, I was about to say creatures, but they're not really creatures. They're, they're characters in this game, really. But um, if I were to attack right now, I might be able to get in some good damage. I have nothing to upgrade Faithful Servant or Ruth, though. Aside from the Helmet of Salvation, which, since I'm on the offensive, I'll be using my power. Um, I have Courage, but that's it for Barnabas. And I just have Steadfastness of Peter, because this just gets me a free hero in the fray. Which, you know what, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to do that this turn, because I want to save it, so I'll go ahead and discard Barnabas. Alright, that leaves me at 8. Okay, we are fighting the Prince of Persia. I'll go ahead and defend that with Uriah, I think. Pharaoh. Yeah, Barnabas. So, these purple brigade dudes... I don't know, that might be blue brigade, but anyway. A lot of their cards have really good defense gains. Like, this gives you 2-4 for 3. And so, they're a lot better on the defensive, but not as good on the offensive. Did I say offensive twice? I don't care. Um, so, I'll go ahead and play Faithful Servant, ah, and Ruth, okay, good. So, we got another Meditation, ooh, I don't have anyone else to use it on. Hmm, what do I want to do here? So we've got Courage, and we've also got Faith, which are the exact same card, as far as what they do. When I saw this card as a kid, I always thought, oh, the little mustard seed is going to go in his eye, and that's going to hurt so much. Because look, it's all bending back like it's going to catapult it into his eye. Ow, ow, my eye! <laughs> it's just a little story. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a story. It's what I thought when I was a kid. Whenever I'd see that card, I'd be like, eh, I have to rub my eye. It makes me feel like there's a little speck in there. Oh, boy. But yeah, yeah, I actually had card... Ugh, I can't talk right now. <laughs> That's a bad thing. It's been a long time since I've recorded a Let's Play episode, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, right now, what I want to do is I'll go ahead and play Faith on Barnabas so that he'll survive. He has double the defense than he does attack. Um, this guy, I want him to live. Uriah. And then I think I'd rather have Ruth live. So I actually want to use the Helmet of Salvation. Hmm. Yeah, because I want her to live. I don't really care too much about Faithful Servant, and right now, those two are going to trade anyway. So, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and you're trading. Which, there's nothing I can do about that anymore, because I used the helmet on Ruth. I could have used Banner on Ruth, um, but then she might not have survived, and I want her to survive. So we'll go ahead and end. So there's a trade. Alright. Interesting. I love it when that happens. <laughs> he just used up a bunch of enhancement cards, and then I still killed all of them. 
Alright, so you're at 9-9, nine, nine, so I'm going to let you stay aside for one more turn. I did not draw any heroes, um, so I'll just hit done. Um, I need to make sure Uriah stays around, because I want to use Sound the Alarm on him. Um, let's see. So the idea is that I'm going to use him, because he's red, and Sound the, Sound the Alarm is red, and that lets another hero join the battle. So if I use that, I can just take in another hero and he doesn't have a chance to assign a defender. So if I get him up to 10 and he has less than or equal to 10 stamina, then I can get him out and then, assuming he plays a defender, I can use Sound the Alarm to get him in for free and then I just do a direct attack without any chance for him to defend against it, which is a nice little combo you can do. Um, so right now, I'm not sure what I want to do. Let's see, I don't really have anything I can play other than cards that let me set aside, which I do have a Meditation and I do have a Prayer and Fasting, but I don't have any non-aside characters that can use them, which is why it sucks to have a, like, five-color deck. Ugh. Okay, well, I'm going to hit Done. Um, Alright, then I have to discard, so I'll get rid of Prayer and Fasting. In fact, I'm going to get rid of all of these yellow cards. Um, I'm going to get rid of Meditation. I don't think I need that. And I want to keep these other purple cards for when Jonathan comes back in, just in case. And then these are good for um, Barnabas. Sound the Alarm I want to keep with Uriah. And that's a good card. In fact, I have less than 8 already, so it's fine. Alright, so my opponent did nothing. Um, well, they, they played as Ahaziah. Ahaziah, yes. So Jonathan is finally at 10 10, so I'm going to release him. And now we can play heroes and whatnot. Um, but again, we don't have any. So, what do I want to do? If I were to use the whole sound the alarm to get Jonathan out for free, I would not actually kill him right now, which is no good. I do have a whole ton of uh, purple enhancement cards though, so I, if I were to play him I'd probably be able to get through um, some damage, and then I'd be able to use him again next turn. So I am actually gonna... no, maybe not. Hmm. I need to save Uriah. No, yeah, okay, I will. I'm gonna play Jonathan. Oh, I'm not in the battle step. So Jonathan... oh, he's not defending it! <laughs> okay! I'm fine with this. Uh, Barnabas, Ruth. So now he has to defend because with that attack I would have killed him. Um, and Uriah, just cause. Alright, so done. Now we power up. I can't power up a hero who's already got the advantage. So you see Jonathan's not um, attacking anyone, which means he has advantage. Ruth, however, is a lower... Well, like you'll see here. He has six and he has five. If I try to play Sound the Alarm. Not enhance. Hero has advantage. So since he already has the advantage, I can't power him up, which is kind of what keeps you from really powering up one guy and getting through a ton of damage. Um, but Ruth, I can give a banner to. So as long as either one of these two can get through even one point of damage through these guys, I'll be able to uh, finish him off. Um, what do I want to get rid of? Oh, I should use that card. This lets me uh, free one of my captured heroes, in this case Cornelius. I could use that on Barnabas, um, although I can't right now because he, he's not being defended. Um, honestly, I probably don't need it. Oh, the Shoes of Peace are an 8-8? Eight, eight? I thought that was a 0-10 like the others. I'm going to get rid of the Breastplate of Righteousness. I don't think I need that. So there's that. He's almost definitely... You can see he has only one Vitality left. Um, oh, here we go. So this is a dominant. It has a lamb symbol. Um, it costs 20 stamina, which at the start of the game, that's all of it. It discards all evil characters. Uh, because I have this card, I win. I use this, it just gets rid of everything he has. So it doesn't matter that he just wasted a bunch of cards to make this guy a 14-15. They go bye-bye because of my epic angel of the Lord. I love that art. But anyway, I hit done, and he can do nothing. Oh, I've got to discard some crap. And there we go. That's our first win. So, when you win, you get one or two uh, food items. In this case, we got a bread. And then we get a couple of cards. So, Zephaniah and an angel food. Yay! 
And that's how you get extra cards to upgrade your deck. And then you leave. So that's that's the game, basically. Hopefully that gave you a good idea of uh, how the game actually works. Right now I want to get up to a specific area that's actually kind of a little hub that you'll be visiting all the time during the game. Um, it's way up here though. Now interesting little tidbit, if you actually die, um, it'll warp you to this location with a little cutscene of a guy finding you. But you see on the little mini-map here, this little uh, crescent moon shaped area. If you see right here, you can see it's a little square. There's the circle, which is actually a, uh, a fountain with water. The water in this pool can soothe your aches and pains. Touch it, you'll see. So if you go up here and then you use the mouse to click on that. This is my favorite uh, text in the game, by the way. You click on it. BEHOLD. <laughs> I love how there's just a text heading of BEHOLD in all caps. And your, vi your vitality has been restored after resting in the soothing waters in the pool. So yeah, that's how you heal your vitality if you don't want to use um, your bread and items and stuff. And then right up here, this particular door right here, above the, above the pool of water and with the carpet in front, you go in there. Welcome, what can I do for you today? And this is the shop. Uh, this guy's name is Jalen, I think. There's my dog shaking out there. And you can uh, buy stuff from him. This I actually have not figured out yet, because you hit buy and he asks for all these different kinds of gems, right? Like, uh, this one. He asks for a common gem, right? Like, oh yeah, a common gem. Uh, I don't know. So, if I were to go to storage, I can go to reserve, and I can give him my extra cards, those two cards that I just got, right? And then if I try to go here and hit buy, it shows me these things, but these aren't common gems. I don't know. Like, if I try to trade him one of these, pay, it says that's not the payment he asked for, so I don't know. I've been playing this for a little bit in my spare time just to figure out how it works, and I still haven't figured out how I'm supposed to get gems. Um, but for now, what I want to do is I want to go in my storage, and the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of some of these uh, green cards, because a lot of these cards are just not great. So, however, these two cards I got... Oh, transit. It violates deck building rules. Does it? I've never had that before. Can I do that? Oh, you know what? What what probably happened there is I already have. Yeah, I've already got three copies of Angel Food, so I can't put another copy in. Darn it! Why give me this then? And one thing here, this says discard. If I click on that, it just does nothing. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that works. But anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. I'm going to go ahead and make a save, and I'm going to overwrite this test save that I was making just to make sure that it worked. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you guys ever so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe before you go. But until next time, goodbye everyone. It's nighttime. time.